Hi students, welcome back again. Today's session is carving session for the maxillary canine. Maxillary right permanent canine. Don't forget the homework which is the left canine. As we said earlier, we are going to carve the crown part of our drawing. So you uh, have to take only the crown part in the drawing session and draw it on the soap. These are the five aspects, the labial aspect. At first mark the length of the crown which is 40, make a horizontal line for the, of the cervical line. Then this is the midline, divide the crown into, as we said, the thirds. Mark this uh, distal contact point, the mesial contact point. Join the lines together and draw as you draw on. Then draw the lingual aspect on the soap. This is the lingual aspect. So on the soap, we will draw the labial and the lingual. We will take off, cut off all the excess from the mesial and the distal side. This is from the lingual and the image before from the labial. We take or we cut off all the excess mesially and distally. The next st step is the second cut. In the second cut, we will draw the mesial and the distal aspects. This is the mesial aspect, this is the distal aspect. Cut off the excess. Uh, after you cut the excess, mesial and distally, or you finish from the first cut, this is how it will look from the incisor aspect. It is like a box. The width of this box is 30 millimeter and the length is 32 millimeters. You have to take the corners. The labial corners you take or you cut off small amount from the mesial labial line angle and the distal labial line angles. From the lingual side you take the corners also but more as you can see here you take more from the lingual this is how it will look after you take the mesial corner the distal corner the uh, lingual uh, corners in the area of the lingual fossa you draw a vertical line two lines representing the lingual ridge and these two areas the mesolingual and the distolingual fossae divided by lingual ridge the general the lingual fossa divided into two fossae, one on the mesial and one on the distal. And this area in red, you have to deepen at two to three millimeters. And also from the center of the cusp tip to the center of the cervical line, draw an inclined line, a curved line. This lines, two lines, represents the area of the labial ridge. The middle half of the crown mesial to it will be convex, resembling the uh, central uh, or the anterior teeth. The distal half resembles posterior teeth, the premolars, where we have here a depression, a curved area. We uh, on the occlusal draw it curved because there is a depression on the distal side of the crown or distal half of the crown. From the lingual aspect, you can notice here the notice here the area in green. Uh, as you notice here, the area in green on the two sides uh, the vertical cutting this area area of the cingulum and here we have the lingual fossa two uh, lines representing the lingual ridge and the fossa is divided into two halves mesolingual and distilingual fossa from the labial side from the center of the cusp tip to the center of the cervical line this is the area of the labial ridge this the how it should look like incisally when we finished the uh, cutting. As you can see here, the mesial half of the crown is convex. The distal half is slightly concave. This is uh, this is the depression here, uh, like premolars. This is the area of the cusp tip. These are the mesial and the distal cusp slopes. Here is the lingual ridge, and this bulge is the labial ridge. Here is from the labial side. You can see the bulge here and the depression on the distal side. This is from lingual side. The mesolingual and the distolingual fossae at the center is the lingual ridge.
the first and most important thing as always on the block of soap is to name the surfaces labial the lingual surface the mesial and the distal always remember that if we're carving the maxillary right canine we should remember that it is the canine of a person in front of us not our right it's his right so it should be opposite to our side the mesial is towards the the right side and the distal is towards the left afterwards we divide the block of soap longitudinally into two halves and then we uh, specify the crown length the crown length for the canine from the edge of the block of soap till the cervical line is 10 millimeters by 4 because our carving is magnified by 4 then it is 40 then we divide this surface into three thirds the mesial uh, and afterwards we should specify the crown the width of the crown at cervix and at the contact points at cervix the mesiodistal diameter of the crown is 5.5. 5.5 by 2 from the midline is 11. Okay. Later on, we should uh, mark the area of the contact points, which is on the table, the mesiodistal diameter of the crown. It is 7.5. The mesial contact area is at the junction of the incisal and middle thirds. The distal contact area is at the middle of the middle. Then we draw the outline of the crown. The inside, the cusp tip of this crown is centered, mesiodistally. So we draw it directly over the midline. Then we draw the outline of the crown. The mesial outline of the crown starting from the contact area is convex. The contact area, as said before, is at the junction of the incisal and middle. Then we connect the mesial cusp edge <coughs> to the cusp. And afterwards, we connect the distal side of the crown with straight lines because it's usually either straight or concave. Okay. Now, the excess soap should be cut from both sides, as was done with the central incisor. Remember always that the cutting should be directly on the lines that are drawn in order not to have too much excess or a bulky tooth. After removing the excess above the drone line, we should remove all excess soap that has stayed in between. Because this, if, we, if it is left, it will affect the shape of the tooth. The same is done with the other side. Now moving to the mesial and distal surfaces, we need to draw the buccal and lingual outlines. Uh, the buccal lingual uh, diameter of the crown at cervix is 7 millimeters by 2 from the midline, then it is 14. 
Now, the maximum contour of the crown usually is at the junction of the cervical and middle thirds and or a little bit lower. It is usually 18 millimeters by two, then 16 towards the buccal and towards the lingual. Then we draw the cusp tip of the canine, which should be a little bit buccal to the midline. Connecting the surfaces together, the buccal outline of the crown is convex all the way. The lingual outline of the crown starts convex at the cingulum area and then a concavity is drawn to mark the area of the lingual fossa. Same is done on the other side. As was done before, the excess is removed from the labial and lingual surfaces according to the lines that were drawn. Now we start with the roundation step. We remove the corners from the mesiobuccal, distobuccal, mesiolingual, and distolingual line angles. The mesiolingual and distolingual line angles we remove more because the tooth or the crown tapers towards the lingual. Then we draw a line demarcating the area where we should leave the buccal ridge and the lingual ridges. The buccal ridge is in the center from the cusp tip to the, till the cervical line and it curves towards the mesial. The lingual ridge is in the center. Now what is left in between should be rounded. As for the mesial outline, as seen from occlusally, should be left convex. Whereas the distal side, as seen from occlusally, should be a little bit concave, and the contact area is left as if stretched to meet the first premolar. Now, the two lingual fossae are carved, deepened, and the lingual corners should be rounded, surrounding the cingulum.
Usually, the lingual fossa is curved using the other end of the lacron carver. After drawing the marginal ridges. After finishing, don't forget to draw the cervical line. The cervical line on the mesial and distal sides curve towards the crown, and on the labial and lingual sides curve towards the root, and it should be continuous all around. As usual, the mesial curvature of the cervical line is more than the distal. The mesial is 2.5 by 4, and the distal curvature of the cervical line is 1.5 by 4. And this is the finished shape of the crown. Remember always that when we look incisally at this tooth, we should know the mesial from the distal sides. The mesial side is convex, whereas the distal side is concave with the contact area stretched.